So, good day. Uh, we will be looking at an uh, example problem here. Okay, uh, um, let us, uh, for the given sensory strain at a point, determine the value of strain energy density. So, we are given the values of uh, Young's modulus. Okay, that is uh, 270 g and the value of uh, the shear modulus. And we are given the tensile strain or small strain density. So, if uh, we have written something like this, uh, the small strain tensile is something like epsilon x and x, epsilon x y, x z, y y, z, epsilon y z. This is a small string tensor, so you can see that this is a symmetric tensor. So, and uh, everything is represented in terms of epsilon. So, this is a tensorial string or a small string tensor. So, um, for solution, we have to remove this. So, we have we are given uh, the uh, models of rigidity, which is also represented as uh, the second level parameter that is mu, which is ATGPA. ATGPA. And the uh, uh, models of uh, elasticity or uh, Young's model that is 207GP. We have a relationship between Young's models and models of rigidity. So from this, we will get mu, and Poisson's ratio is 0.29. Next. So we know that uh, the strain energy density U is equal to half of stress and strain, half of stress to strain. That is, we have to sum over the entire thing. So here we have to, we are given the strains to find the stresses. So one more thing that we have to remember is uh, in case of shear, the equation is equal to half into sigma xy or the cross component into gamma xy. So we have to find the engineering strain, but here we are given the small strains or the tensorial strains. So we have to convert this to strain. So obviously we have a relation that is Epsilon xy is equal to gamma xy by 2. So gamma xy is epsilon x by 2. So 2 into epsilon x by 7. Now we have to do with this. And um, we have had the relationship that is uh, that relates this to sense strain that I have given here. For uh, the diagonal components or the normal components, we have uh, sigma is equal to 2 mu, 2 mu epsilon xx plus delta lambda, where delta is a dilation. Uh, you can see here delta is a dilation, lambda is the first lambda parameter, mu is the models of rigidity. So from this, um, you can see that we have to have lambda and mu, lambda and mu to find out uh, the diagonal component, the diagonal components, and for the uh, off diagonal components, we have we just have to multiply the engineering strain with the modulus of rigidity. So for that, um, we have lambda is equal to nu e by one plus nu plus one minus two nu. You can substitute or everything is given that you can substitute will get one to mu point a gpa similarly we can find lambda with the sum of the diagonal components which is 2 into into is 2 minus 3 that's just this being a summation of strains it's not have a unit next is uh, we list down the strain components here the diagonal components are as such the off diagonal components will change the off diagonal components that is x y z right? as I mentioned here gamma x y is equal to 2 epsilon x y so we multiply the 2 with every off diagonal components so we'll be left with the, the 
uh, engineering streets. And next, we obviously we have everything that we need. We'll substitute and find the value of uh, x and x x and y y and sorry, uh, sigma x x from y y and sigma x y. And we just multiply g or u is also empty with uh, the engineering string components to find the stress. After that, we have we'll get the uh, uh, strain tensor. Now uh, this written component in its respective place in the strain tensor. The next step is very easy. We just have to sum over the product of the stress and strain and multiply the entire thing with half. So we'll be left with everything. We know everything. So finally, we'll get an answer, which is in joules. So now uh, this is how we do this problem. I hope you can understand it.